my brand new haircut. I got my brand new chair here in my office. But one thing I did learn yesterday is when you go to a barber and he looks bored, he's gonna spend that time with you. He took a lot off yesterday. Oh well, I need it. But anyways, so one thing that is always on a home buyer's mind is what's gonna happen after the home inspection? What's wrong with your neck? And, and how are you going to negotiate those repairs? Well, the good news is for you that there are a lot of different options here. And one of those options is actually getting a credit from the seller. But how does that work? Well, that's what we're going to dive into today. So let's jump on that right after this. Well, full disclosure here, my name is Steve Arthur and I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area and all of the surrounding cities, powered by Nationwide Real Estate Executive. Let's take a look exactly as to what a seller's credit is instead of doing the repairs themselves. Well, actually, it is exactly the way it sounds. When talking about a seller's credit instead of doing the repairs, but what this means is that the sellers are going to reach deep into their pockets and they're going to offer you money in lieu of doing the repairs. Now this will give you the chance to say, hell yeah, I'll take your money. I will make sure that these repairs will get done to my satisfaction. Now of course there are pros and cons and other different kinds of trade-offs. So number one, the first thing right after, usually within 24 to 48 hours after the inspection, your home inspector will provide you and your trusted real estate advisor a copy of the home inspection. Now, this report will contain his notations, his observations, his opinions about what is actually going on with this property and its condition. Now, keep in mind though that this part of the home buying process, it's not a pass or fail scenario. All that it is, it's an observation by a home inspector making it clear as to what they believe as to what's going on with this particular property. Now, some properties will be examined extremely well, look really nice, they've been well maintained, well cared for. And other properties, when that list just keeps getting longer and longer, it can be overwhelming, but all the same. You approach the report with an open mind and clarity. Now, back to my disclosure. I have been helping families relocate across the nation to the Long Beach area and the surrounding cities, while also helping families move out of the state for their dream retirement. So if this is your first time seeing me here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, so you will be notified every time I put out a video. And I do put out these videos every single week, all about the things that you want to know about. We want to work, we want to live, we want to eat, and of course, where you want to play, and even what happens after the home inspection. So if you or anybody you may know is thinking about relocating to the Long Beach area, or if you are thinking about moving out of state and would like to know how much equity you have in your home to find your dream location, all you have to do is give me a call, shoot me a text, send an email, or just register on my website and I will personally call you. All my information is down below. So now to the second things. So what are you going to do when you negotiate these repairs? So again, get with your trusted real estate advisor, review the report and see what the professional suggestions are about what probably should be requested and try to balance that in line with what you would like to also see corrected. Now keep this in mind with cosmetic things. These are not exactly the things that you want to make requests for. Instead, you want to save your request for, let's say the electrical system needs some attention. The HVAC system needs some attention. These are the type of concerns that you want to put into the buyer's repair request form. But by the very nature of the word, we are asking the seller to make these repairs. And the seller? Yeah, they don't have to make any of them, but most sellers will keep an open mind to reasonable home repair requests. So when we are talking about reasonable requests, so let's just say the home inspector brought up an issue with the air conditioning system. He states that it is outside the 18 to 22 degree differential that it should be operating within. 
The home inspector report states that you need to have an HVAC technician come out and service it. Now, this would be a definite item that you'd want to make a request for. Now, let's say the second one, the home inspector points out there is some moisture staining on underneath the eaves on one side of the house. Well, that is something else that you'd want to get cleared up because the home inspector's recommendations may include you need to have a roofing inspector come out to further assess damages or a roofing company to further assess this. And this will give you a ballpark figure as to how much it will cost to correct these repairs. Now the third one, the water heater. The home inspector point out that the water heater is pretty much on its last leg, but it is still working. So now you put all three of those items into your buyer's repair request form. Now your trusted real estate advisor, he's going to have you sign it and he is going to send it over with the home inspection report to the listing agent. When the listing agent receives it, they will take it over to the selling party and review it. Now that takes us right into seller's option. Now the seller has an option to say, yes, I will fix everything on this list or you know what? I'll fix the first two. I'll go ahead and do the air conditioning unit and I will take care of the roofing matter. But as far as the water heater, it's still working. Okay, well, that, that sounds doable. That sounds like very, very workable. Or one of the things that they can do is say, hey, you know we're moving, we're kind of pressed for time. We don't really have all this energy and effort to call contractors, arrange for them to come out and get the bids and do all that. We just don't have the time. So how would you feel about taking a credit in lieu of us doing the repairs? Now this is coming to you in the form of money, right? Since you can't receive cash for your repairs per se, what they do is seller agrees to contribute X amount to buyers closing costs in lieu of making repairs. And this will actually be done on the form that will be used for the negotiations of the home inspection. Then what takes place is an addendum will be drafted that simply reads that the seller will contribute X amount of dollars to buyer's closing costs. But right now you're probably thinking to yourself, if I'm taking credit in lieu of doing the repairs, how come the money's not coming directly to me? Or why don't you just simply state it like that? Well, you know what, that's a great question. So the reason that the addendum is needed to get your credit from the seller, and the reason why this is being applied to your closing costs, because if the lender knows that the credit is being applied towards repairs, the appraiser, the lender, and everybody gets really, really nervous. What else is wrong? Why, why are you receiving money for this? You know, what's, what, what's going on here? They just don't like that idea at all. But there is nothing, nada, zero, to preclude a seller from making a contribution to the buyer's closing costs or simply lowering the price of the house. Now in practice, I see this all the time here in Long Beach. One of the best things you can do if you're a buyer and you are in the situation where the seller does not want to make the repairs himself but is offering you credit, the best thing for you to do is simply accept the credit. And make sure that that credit is in line with the realistic cost as to what it may cost for you to bring that home to your satisfaction. Now this provides a couple of different pros and one con that you want to listen to. First pro. If you accept the credit, it's obviously going to reduce the amount of money at the end of the day to close on your home that you need to wire. So let's say for an example, the seller agreed to give you a $4,000 credit and you are buying a $500,000 home here in Long Beach. But we know closing costs are gonna run about 3%, so that's $15,000 that you would have to wire at close of escrow to gain possession of your home. Now, with that $4,000 credit that the seller is providing that you negotiated through your home inspections, you're only on the hook for $11,000. The second pro is it gives you, the homeowner, the opportunity to hire your own contractors or do the repairs yourself to your satisfaction. Oh, I like that. So with your professional contractors and your professional oversight, 
you can get these repairs made. And that is another big pro of taking the credit. Now, here's the one that you're waiting for. It's the butt, but this time it comes in the form of a con if you wanna look at it that way. Now, a con to consider here is, while it is going to reduce the amount of money that you need to wire at the end of the day, who is on the hook to make these repairs now? You are, you're the homeowner. Now, once you close, is there gonna be an inspector to come out to your house to make sure that these repairs were made? No. There will not be an inspector to come back out to make sure that everything is completed. It is upon you as a homeowner at this point to make these repairs or not. Now, I strongly suggest that if you have any home maintenance items that need to be addressed, you take that money as soon as you move in and you get those repairs made. This will safeguard your home ownership and ensure that your home is well maintained from the very beginning. And we all know that things do not fix themselves. So the longer you put it off, the bigger it gets, which means it will be more expensive down the road to correct. Now, remember earlier when we were talking about moisture underneath the eaves on the one side of the house. So why was that an important issue to, to address? Well, what would have happened if the homeowner did not have that roof permitted and did it himself 10, 15 years ago and just ran a little bit short and pieced together the felt paper that goes underneath the composite shingles. But he ran short by about two feet and there's where your moisture is at. So now you step in, it just looks like a little moisture, but it's down in between the walls. It's, it's developing to be quite a big problem. So if you do notice something that does not get called out on the report, put that on your honeydew list. So that is one of the biggest cons here is that the work is not getting done during the closing process. And now it is upon you to make these repairs. You gotta do, just get her done. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, my name is Steve Arthur, and I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area and all of the surrounding cities powered by nationwide real estate executives. And until next time, you take care and have a great one.